Good evening, my friend. Welcome to the show. I am Lou Mangiello. It is Wednesday night. I am so excited. I needed to see you tonight. If you are watching live, thank you so much for being here. Do me a favor, tag and invite a friend. And if you're watching on the replay, don't forget to join us every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, right here at www.radiolive.com. Again, Wednesday nights. Always my favorite night of the week. It has nothing to do with yesterday being Taco Tuesday, today being Hump Day, or getting one day closer to the weekend. It's because it is the one day of the week that I get to see you, my friends. Believe it or not, I I don't leave the house very often. <laughs> so most of my work takes place right here at the desk. Every now and then I venture out into the heat and into the parks to cover the Disney stuff, but this really is where um, everything happens. So you guys mean so very much to me individually and collectively as the Box People group. I see a lot of familiar names and faces coming in as always, as well as some new faces as well. If this is your first time here, please do me a favor, introduce yourself, grab a snack. There's plenty of stuff in the fridge. Make yourself comfortable, sit back, relax, you know, the uh, the whole um, the whole idea of that. And, you know, uh, I need to before we get into the Toy Story 4 discussion, which I've been actually very anxious to chat a little bit more about. I really couldn't say very much right after I saw it. I didn't want to because I know that most people hadn't seen it as as yet. But now that a little bit of time has gone by, I still want to talk about in a very spoiler free kind of way. And more importantly, I'm going to want to hear from you um, in terms of your calls and your comments as well. But I prefaced this um, show tonight and you need to indulge me if you can for just a couple of minutes. Um, (laughs) This is going to be (laughs) harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, I said at the top of the show about um, family and friendship, and and those are words. um, There's there's a few words in in um, in my vocabulary that I don't throw around very often, and family is one of them. Um, It's something that is is very very important and means a lot to me. And uh, I always thought that you had to be born into or marry into family. I thought family was really, I probably watched Godfather way too many times as a kid. Not that that's what my parents were teaching, was showing me, making me watch, but I watched, I don't know. I, family, that's what it always meant to me, was you, you had friends and your family was something different um, and that it was always about blood. And and you taught me that it's not um, by your friendship and by your love and um, and not just towards me, but what I've been able to witness in terms of you towards each other. Um, we use words like clubhouse and community, but it really is about people um, like you. And I um, <clears throat> like John Jones. Um John Jones has been a longtime member of the Box People family. I have known John for um, many, many years, mostly through the Box and through email and through Messenger. Um, We became friends. We shared many, many interests, not just Disney and NFL football and nerd culture and food, of course, because New Orleans. Um, John was a cast member many, many years ago. Um, It was last in... um, IT in um, his home state of Mississippi. And I saw John uh, at Walt Disney World um, when he was here for a visit with his mom and dad um, a couple of months ago. And um, I did not realize at that time that it would be the last time I saw John. Um, I received a call from his dad earlier in the week. And I know a lot of um, folks in the box had, had reached out to me and to John because we hadn't heard from him um, in a um, <clears throat> we hadn't heard from him in a while and I was amazed at, at how people were proactively going to try and see what um, what had happened to John um, I uh, <clears throat> I got a call from John's dad a couple of days ago um, 
and found that that he was in the hospital and he was not doing well. John was a transplant patient and had been having problems with um, his liver and kidneys and, and um, things like that. And I share this um, tonight because I, I'm... <clears throat> Sorry, if this is your first time watching, I promise this is not what every show is like. Um, <laughs> let me let me do this. Let me do this, and hopefully you can hear at um, at the same time. And maybe ways that you can't um, necessarily foresee or even imagine. And um, you absolutely impacted John's life and his uh, family's life in a very, very important and meaningful way. Um, I passed along our um, our condolences to his family. And um, I hope to see John's parents um, either when they come down here or if I make it out that way, but I wanted to share that with you. And more importantly, I wanted to thank you for what you did for John and his family. And especially this week with the incredible outpouring of emotion and support and sentiment and memories and photos. Um, and I would ask um, whether you are a prayerful person or not, I don't care how old your kids are. They're, they're, a parent should never have to bury their child. Um, so I could not imagine what they are going to going through. Um, but John, I I imagine I hope that you are sitting wherever you are with Walt, sharing something um, sharing something delicious. Um, hopefully, tuning into the show because every every view is really important. Because um, you know. I'm all about the numbers. <laughs> so I just wanted to say, um, I wanted to say thank you for that. Um, and I'm sorry to to bring down the room <laughs> right off the bat, but if I didn't get it off my chest now, it, um, I, I just needed to. So um, this is not, unfortunately, this is not the first time, you know, we have lost somebody, um, you know, John and oddly enough, man, John and, and Ricky DJ Technoid Reed, whose music I've played and shared before on the show. Um, he passed, um, gosh, I get about a year ago. Um, and there have been other people um, over time who um, 
we had lost and uh it's hard man and and um as people as somebody who has you know been friends with and spent time with um and it's sometimes memories man sometimes the memories thing on facebook is tough um you know there was somebody who we lost a few years ago um and a memory came up of of him being on a cruise with us um and it gets you because it, it does feel like family and that's how you um that's what you mean to me and i hope that that's what you mean to each other and i think i don't care man i'll say it i think that's what this what makes this group different and it's what makes you special and unique among the many 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 wonderful communities that are out there disney and otherwise um what i see in terms of the interactions between all of you is something unlike i have seen any anywhere else um so again thank you for that um Go hug your family, go hug your parents, go call your mom and dad and tell them that you love them or your best friend or whoever you consider family um, because you just never know. So, uh, and speaking of family, man, I got to really try and transition out of this um, and segue any way that um, that I possibly can. You know, I, I recently saw a movie that was all about friendships and family and families that become friends. It's really hard to transition to a movie review um, after that, but um, the show must go on, and uh, I am sure that's exactly what John and probably Walt are saying. Okay, Lou, move it along. Um, I recently did see a, um, um, I, I did see a um, a movie recently. Obviously, we're talking about um, Toy Story Four, and I wanted to share. A bit of a spoiler-free re- spoiler free review. I want to be respectful of those people who have not had an opportunity to see the film as yet, but talk about it because the film impacted me in ways that I did not expect. And I will tell you right from the outset, and I may have mentioned this uh, a couple weeks ago when I just gave uh, a very, very, very brief, overview of my thoughts um when toy story was announced the first thing in my mind and out of my mouth was why um i this was the movie i did not feel needed to be made i thought that the trilogy was wrapped up neatly in a very emotional bow um i had i i have and realizing now toy story has literally been around for a generation 24 plus years but i thought that it was um, it was complete, and I thought that it had been time to move on. So when I hear that Toy Story 4 is coming out, I am cautious yet optimistic because Disney, I feel, has earned my respect and my trust, and they wouldn't tell the story unless they felt that they needed to tell it. Um, I think I mentioned both on social and, and last week, that I felt that um, it was a visually stunning movie. It, it hit me in a lot of... Di- Clearly, I'm a very emotional person. It hit me in many, many um, different types of feels, but I walked away feeling that it was some of Pixar's best work ever, and if you don't believe me, I went to go see it again on Sunday, and I liked it even more. Um, I watched it with a new set of eyes. I had my entire family with me. My son had seen it with me the first time um, for the the press preview. And then I took my wife and daughter to see it again because I wanted to sort of gauge their reaction and watch it a second time because there's so much to, um, to pick up from the film, which again, I had never expected to see in a theater. I think that part of the issue with Toy Story was the trailer. I think not only did the trailer not do it justice, I think the trailer did it and may even continue. I don't know if there's only been any updated trailers. I think the trailers did Toy Story 4 very much a disservice. Um, I don't think it sold the film well. 
And it, it performed well in the box office. It did even better international box office. I don't know if the international trailers were different, um, but there were a lot of things that I got from this film that I was not expecting. Uh, you know, we talked in terms of our community and a lot of those of friendship and, and loyalty and love and honor and there's sacrifice and doing what's right and and moving on um, in, in lots of different ways. So I wanted to share some of my thoughts on Toy Story without sharing spoilers and some reasons why, if you haven't seen it yet, I think you need to go and see Toy Story 4. Um, and, and again, I think, um, you know, one of the things that Disney does so, so well, what what separates this studio, the parks, um, even their characters, is the way they make us feel. Toy Story 4 is very much a, 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 a wonderful emotional roller coaster, which I think is a hallmark of so many of the great Disney and Pixar films. Um, I think the ones that I, for me, I consider some of my favorite of the Pixar films are the ones that touch me on a deeply emotional level. I think Wally is probably my favorite because especially the first two acts of that film, not a word is spoken. There's no human character. And yet it moves me in, 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 in a fundamentally emotional kind of way up. The first 10 minutes of up is the best part of that movie. I, you can they could end it right there and I could walk out feeling satisfied. I mean, I cry my eyes out. Wally, uh, Wally, Toy Story 4 had me, yes, getting choked up at moments, but not in a, oh my God, they're going into the incinerator, spoiler alert for Toy Story 3 kind of way. But I was laughing until I cried and then I was, I was very heartfelt in other ways. Uh, not in a sad kind of way, but sometimes you're filled with just emotion, happy or otherwise, that it does sort of bring you to tears. Um, and I think a lot of these characters go through, you really see, <laughs> it's funny, we're talking about um, um, animated characters as if they're people, but they do go through their own character arcs and stories and, and maturation processes and so many of the characters that we know and are familiar with and some new ones really have some amazing moments in this film, like these hallmark moments that you're going to walk away remembering. And let's get the 800-pound spork out of the way. If you didn't think you're going to love Forky, I'm telling you, you will. I walked out going, I need me a Forky something, a plush, a Funko, a photo, whatever. Um, again, this is what I think the trailers don't do well. You're like, Ay, is Forky going to be this somewhat annoying but, but important character for me? Uh, not in the least bit, but... You know, I, I talked about how this has been sort of a 24, right? Like literally a generational journey. There are a lot of moments. And, and one of the things about the Disney films that I think are special is how we can watch them as kids. We watch them as we get older. We then watch them as adults. We then watch them as parents and then watch it through our kids' eyes as you watch these movies over and over again, or you can watch it with your kids and see something completely different, not because there are adult jokes, and there are, there are some things that will absolutely go over kids' heads, not in a blue kind of way, but in a wonderfully funny and nostalgic kind of way, but it does touch on um, uh, relationships and stories and lessons that you will be able to apply to your own life possibly now as well as those of your kids the lessons your kids might take away might be different than those that you do 
Um, and even when we did the, the 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 press event, there was a couple of things that that some of the people had said that really had impacted me. And the Christina Hendricks, who, if you've ever seen Firefly, you know I love Firefly. She's Saffron. I she's also Gabby Gabby. She talked about how the importance of of understanding and listening to somebody's complete story before making judgments about them. And I'm like, not only are you wonderful and know so many ways, but but you're really you're right and. You sort of have, if you go in with preconceived ideas of the of some characters, whether it's Gabby Gabby or Forky, you might come out at the end feeling differently, and you might take away different things from this movie than your kids do. But I am telling you, you're going to make new friends, right? It's about friendships along the way, from Forky and Duke Kaboom. L- listen, this is the this is just Keanu's world. We're just living in it but even some of those characters and there's a scene inside an antique store it's not a spoiler there's a a a lengthy scene inside an antique store which by the way and i'll get to this is breathtakingly beautiful that there is going to be it's going to take you on a wonderful trip down memory memory lane um it's about personal nostalgia first of all I literally, and the theater that I was in, I was all the way off to the side. I kept it. I had to pull my phone out the second time I saw it because I wrote down no less than 20 or so specific Pixar references that I found in that one scene alone. But um, it's also from a nostalgic point of view in terms of personal reflection uh, maybe inspiring a little bit of change. And I know you're like, wait a minute, Lou, this is a kid. It's not. This is a, a movie as much for adults as it is for kids. And I will tell you, I deliberately went to go see it a Sunday afternoon at, I think that my f- showing was 3 o'clock or 3.30. 95% of that theater were adults, no kids. And I'm taking my children out of the equation. There were maybe three, five, seven kids that I saw in that theater total, which I think is very, very interesting from a um, uh, a demo and, and audience appeal kind of view. And maybe it's because we have grown up for 25 almost years with this film. But if you love the details and the Easter eggs, it is you need to almost see it again just so you can watch that one scene, forget other scenes, but do I, shy, do I share Easter eggs? Do I share some of the things that you can look? I'll tell you just some of the things that I found as I was looking through. If you don't want to know what some of them are, that's fine. Um, going back to emotions, right? There was Carl and Ellie's house from Up. There was Bing Bong's rocket. Um, even in the little girl's, so part of the story is a little girl has her first day of school. Um when she goes to school inside the cubbies and lockers, like take a look at the backpacks, the back, the, the, um, the fabric of the backpacks is inspired by things you may or may not have seen in a little film called monsters Inc. Um, there's the knickknack game in the antique store. I have to share this. There's a little scene. It's amazing and awesome inside the antique store. Look out for Obi Wan Kenobi, chop it! It's awesome, and there's even a little Wilhelm scream in the background. There's a, a great, there's um, the grape soda pin. Tin toys is in there. Um, there's a reference to The Shining that's in there, which is phenomenal. Like I think I was the only person that laughed out loud. Uh, the Carburetor County from Cars, Wally. There's a 2001 A Space Odyssey, open the pod bay doors, Hal, reference in there, Zerg, by and large, The Muppets, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, and Jeremiah was a bullfrog, was a good friend of mine, and even Keanu being Keanu. Like, I loved it more the second time because I was specifically going in to try and look for those and I almost want to like go back or just wait for it to come out and be able to 
watch it again so I can try and pick out um, what I might have missed. It and I and I so back. It's very hard sometimes to watch them. You need to watch it first from a thirty thousand foot view, and then you need to watch it with a microscope. And what I mean by that is you need to watch the film for the film, and then need to go back and almost tune out some things so you can try and sp- like. I wanted to hit the pause button at the theater. I'm like Sinopolis guy. Can you just pause this? Can you rewind this for a second? Because I sure I saw something in the background, but. Beyond that, um, the thing that I think, I think the reason why I loved this film so much, and I do, I, and I don't love, and, and just to be clear, like, I don't see every Disney movie. I don't love every, there's a lot of Disney movies. I have not seen Aladdin. I have not seen a lot of the live action films. I have never seen Cinderella. I haven't, there's a lot of ones that I haven't seen or just don't sort of get, Toy Story 4 got me, like, a lot. And I think because I found that this is such a relatable movie, I think that that every character, and so I'm thinking about this as as I'm saying it out loud, so if it sounds stupid, forgive me. I think every character is almost there to be an avatar, not in the tall blue people kind of way but an avatar for somebody to find to relate to like there were and I won't say who and I won't say why but I was watching the film and I'm like yeah like I'm that that guy is me like that's how I would feel that's what I would do this is this is what I have gone through or this is what I am going through right there's a lot of there's a lot of transition that happens here and some people are more accepting or excited and others are more reluctant to it and i think you'll look and go yeah like that's gonna be me i'd want to stay or i'd want to go or this is what i would do um and i and i didn't expect it to be as deep as it was i was like toy story 4 it's gonna be a fun silly little movie i'll see it once which is what i've seen i've only seen toy story 3 one time and i think because it got me in a feels kind of way that i wasn't expecting i was i'm still i'm still sad that they lied to me about Lotso. I wanted Lotso to be a wonderful, fluffy, huggable bear, which he is. He smells like strawberries, but he's a bad dude. And I and I felt betrayed <laughs> to a certain degree, and I think I haven't gotten over it. But Toy Story 4 may be... It's undoubtedly with the, the top two of the Toy Story films. It's really, really good. Like, it's really good. Like, Toy Story 1, I loved because it was new, it was novel, it was groundbreaking um, in terms of the visuals. However, I almost, I, 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 I want you to go and watch Toy Story, the first one, before or again, having seen Toy Story 4, if you could almost see them side by side, from a visual standpoint... This film is remarkable. I said this a couple of weeks ago, that opening curtain scene, which is an exterior shot in the rain at night, you will watch it and feel like you are watching a a, 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 a film, like actual something that is filmed. And I, the first time I saw it, I'm like, I looked at my son, I'm like, this is weird. Are they almost doing like an exterior live action shot and then taking us into the animated world? No, that's just how well it was done. And I have to take a deliberate pause and give credit, not necessarily to the character artist and the the animators. The I was very hyper aware on my second viewing of the backgrounds of this film. This film stands out not because of what's in the foreground, but because of what's in the background. And every leaf... Every shadow, every raindrop, every splash, every ray of sunlight, every leaf in the wind, which is also another Firefly reference, was incredibly beautiful. And I was, I found myself watching the secondary and tertiary parts of the scenery as opposed to the action in the forefront because I was amazed. So 
I, I want to give special because I don't think they get enough. The, the people who do the background art are a huge reason why this film is so incredibly, incredibly beautiful. And you will forget that you are watching an animated film, I promise you. Um, whether it's the interior or the exterior shots, and I keep referring back to inside the shop where I was noticing like scratches on the glass, on on the antique glass, um, reflections in windows, um, weathering, dust, the movement of the air. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I, I wanted to get as almost granular as I could so that I can enjoy and appreciate it and give huge thanks and credit to um, the background artists. Now, flipping to the other side of that coin, on the front side, it's beautiful and it's a character-driven story and I am telling you, you're gonna come out and you're gonna want all the merch from the Funkos to the wearables to the toys that respond to your voice commands. You tell them Andy's coming and Buzz and Woody drop to the ground Legos, purses, shoes, hats, cars. There's something um, for everyone. And to the voice cast, um, they all contribute so much. But Tom Hanks, um, Henry from Bosom Buddies, I remember you when... Um, it's it's incredible how the the importance of a, a true voice actor. There's voiceovers and there are narrators. Tom Hanks is just funny and emotional and brilliant. Um, the, the, listen, as well as the rest of the cast. Um, and again go back and watch the early Toy Story films specifically for characters like, Bo Peep. She has gone through a journey and an arc. Um, and again, I don't want to say too much without spoiling. Um, what I will say is this is as because I want to hear from you if you have seen um, if you have seen Toy Story for, Toy Story Four, I would absolutely absolutely love to um, hear from you and I will. Um, I'll pull up the voicemail number, but what I will say is this is more than ever like Toy Story. You've got a fan and a friend in me. Um, I'm not so sure I'm done seeing this in theaters. I've watched it in 2D twice. I normally do it the opposite way. I might almost want to go back and see it again in 3D just to appreci appreciate the beauty and the aesthetics of that film. Now, that was way too much, Mangella. You've been blabbing for hours, what seems like. I want to hear from you. I'm going to start taking the first calls and callers. I if it was ringing the whole time. I'm so sorry. I didn't even realize that. Um, hey, it's Lou. You're on the air. Hey, Lou Mangello. This is Andrew Thompson calling from British Columbia, Canada. Andrew Thompson from Canada. How are you, my friend? Duke Kaboom representing I, Canada in a big, beautiful way. Yes, and that was a great movie. So uh, it, so, uh, tell me your thoughts. On a scale of 1 to 10. Hmm. A big 11. You turned it up to 11. Now, is that 11, like, metric, and which is really like a 10 American? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so what was it for you? Like, just very quickly, what was it for you that made this film rate so high for you? Do you know the characters that were in the other three movies, plus some new ones that I've never seen? Who's your favorite new character? Oh, um, I have to go with Duke Kaboom. Of course, man. Wait, where's my Duke Kaboom plush? Hold on a second. Uh, where did I put Duke Kaboom? Wait a minute. Hold on. My Funko, I mean. What, there's a Duke Kaboom plushie now? I have. Sorry, not a plush. I meant my Funko. 
I've already got oh. my Duke Kaboom Funko added to uh, added to my collection. So so cool. So the first um, that's awesome. The first review that we have coming in from a listener is eleven. I'm going to quickly cycle through to our next caller, man. I appreciate you taking the time to call in. And happy Stitch Day. Happy six two six to you as well, buddy. Aloha. Take care. <laughs> Bye. So Kelly Lawrence loves Ducky and Bunny. Um, listen, I, I'm not going to say right off the bat who maybe my favorite new character is, but hey, it's Lou. You're on the air. Hey, Lou. It's Chris Bannis. How are you? Chris Bannis, how are you? I'm good. Hey, I just saw the movie again yesterday for the second time. I went uh, Thursday by myself because nobody else could go with me, and then Paul went with me yesterday, and I said, you're going to be emotional. Well, I was more emotional the second time than I was the first time. And, I mean, I was literally bawling like a baby at the end. You know why. Right. I'm not going to say. Um, but the but ending not in a bad, bad way, right? I, I think no, it was not no. Because I, I, and I'm, no. and this is, so Chris, this is the one of the things that, that I've seen on social a lot is it's interesting. Some of the, the online reviews and take them for what they are. There's a lot of people that complain about the ending and I'm like, no, no, no. Like, oh no, no. I love the <laughs> I, ending. Yeah, I did. And it actually, I mean, you know what I just went through with work um, it was rather like a metaphor for what I just went through with retiring last week. Yeah. And again, this is not, we're not spoiling anything and we're not even sort of right. hinting. There's no, whatever you think we're hinting as to what the ending is, I promise you're wrong. Right. So no, I, I did not expect that. I did not expect all. it either. Um, I didn't expect no, it either, I, but yeah. it left me satisfied. You know, it, it, it yeah. and, and it's hard. It's very, very hard to do that. For a, a film that has been around for so long, look, there's no yep. ending normally. Look, think about something like Lost, right? I loved Lost. People right. lost their collective consciousness with the ending. They hated it. <laughs> but I'm like, how do you sort of, you know, wrap this up in a tight bow? Yeah. I, I like how they did it here. And I felt like my heart felt full at the end of this yeah. one, uh, yeah. which I, I mean, didn't my... feel in Toy Story 3. Yeah. My kids grew up with Toy Story. I mean, I have a son that's 29 and a son that's 26. We did all the Toy Story films together. I mean, not like Toy Story 3, no. My youngest one went with us because he just absolutely said he had to go with us. So we went to see that. And it was just so funny, you know. It's like this grown, grown man is sitting there watching this movie with his mother. <laughs> but anyway, um, I just got to tell you a quick story about the people that were sitting next to us yesterday in the theater. It was a grandfather, probably in his 50s, late 50s, and he had two twin grandsons with him, and they were both flanking him. So one of them was sitting next to me. And we were chit-chatting a little bit before the movie started because that's the way I am with kids. <laughs> And um, they had just come back from Disney World, and they saw the previews in Hollywood Studios while they were there. So they kind of knew what to expect, and I said, well, just get ready, because mm -hmm. this is nothing like what you saw from what I was told. So, um, you know, he's like watching the movie, and they were, you know, laughing and all sorts of things. Well, then the end comes, and I'm bawling like a baby. <laughs> And the little boy looks at his grandpa, and he's looking at me, and he looks at grandpa, he goes, Grandpa, the nice lady is crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I've just been thrown under the bus here. No, I don't. So. And look, I, you know, I don't care. They, they're not paying attention. It doesn't matter. I, I will tell you that I looked over, and I saw my kids crying. You know, I oh. saw my kids. And... But it it's not in, you know, it wasn't in a bad way. Like, no, I'll, no, put, no. I'll put it this way. I was more emotionally drained and tapped at Avengers Infinity War oh, than I sure. was at Toy Story 4. Yeah. So it, it's it's a different yeah. type of an emotional journey, but I and really in, in yeah. such a wonderful, wonderful way. It's, yeah. it's amazing no, really, storytelling. I, yeah. 
I want to go see it again now because now I have to go find all those little things that you were talking about because still I was so engrossed in, yeah. you know, uh, the movie itself that I, I didn't get a chance. I mean, Easter I saw eggs. a few things here and there, but, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I wrote down, I gotta like go I said. got to go pick all those out now. Yeah, I wrote down so. probably like 20 Easter eggs or so. So All right, yeah. let me grab a couple of the calls that are coming right. in fast and furious. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, it's Lou. You're on the air. Hi, it's Amanda Le Cicero. Amanda Catherine Le Cicero from Star Wars <laughs> Celebration and many, many other times. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you. <laughs> so we're still talking about Toy Story 4, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. No, I just wanted to say, like, my my favorite character, I know she's not new, obviously, but is Bo. I feel like she's a new character of herself, obviously. And I just, I like what they did with her. I like her more, you know, modern feminist view and take on her and how she's such a leader in it. Like, she's such a front runner. Yeah. yeah without she, giving she, anything away. Right. She's a strong... <laughs> You know, she's a uh, not to not to overuse the word, but she is. She's a very strong, but still a likable character. I, and I think mm-hmm. that's what I found is that so many of the characters are likable. Many of the characters are sympathetic. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I'm thinking of you, GI Joe like character. You so <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know. And by the way, look at all to you if you. You need to stay until the very, very, very oh, last did. Did. second of the film. I did, and I was so happy I did because I'm like, finally! There was <laughs> us and one other couple in the theater, and when I turned around, I'm like, what is wrong with you people? Like, have you not learned any... It is, there's a payoff at the very end that is absolutely worth it. Yes, Alex and I were like, don't you know you don't leave for Pixar <laughs> or Marvel? Like, you always ever. stay. Why ever, is anyone ever, leaving? Ever. And exactly. the, the Mr. Toad joke, I actually, like, <laughs> left out of my seat, was like, yeah! And I think I'm the only person who knew what the heck they were talking about. <laughs> I loved it, and I, and I know exactly I, the scene that you're talking about, so so I'm with mm-hmm. you. Yeah. And I was so happy. But my favorite, like, new characters... We're Bunny and Ducky, but it's majorly because I like Key and Peele, <laughs> um, who voice them. And they just, like, their, their riffs off each other, yeah. like in any other comedic form, are just great. And so it played into Toy Story very well. So I was I was very excited about all of it and terrified for, like, <laughs> 75% of the movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, and there, there are some... And not in a bad or scary way, but there are dark elements to this film. But, I mean, the same way that there were dark elements to all of the films. Because, I, I, again, you see yeah. that online, people saying that this is a much darker film. I think Sid is a, and Toy Story 1 is a very, very dark, scary oh, character. Because yeah. I knew this Sid. This reminds me I was, of my neighbor growing right, up. Right. I knew Sid. <laughs> Sid stole my toys and did really bad things to them, too. Like... I get yeah. it. You could, and, and obviously Lotso, I mean, you could even make an argument that Al was a, um, in, in Toy Story 2, was a, a you know, yeah. a little scary. So there's a dark element to there, but there's um, there's a very bright side to this. Again, without giving anything away, there's a very bright side yeah. to this movie as well. It was um like how Endgame is sad, but I was very satisfied at the end. That's how this was for me. Yeah. I was just very satisfied with I, it. Yep, like, you're exactly sad, but... I'm sad in any Pixar movie. Yep. <laughs> so, oh. well, good. Well, thank you so much for but calling was, in. Yes, thanks for talking. <laughs> All right. Take care. Good. To, All right. Bye. <laughs> thanks. Take care. And yes, and it, it was Combat Carl. Um, Combat Carl. So hey, it's Lou. You're on the air. Hey, it's Lisa. Uh, Lisa. Lisa Denoto Glasner. Oh, f- from the Castle Run, that Lisa Denoto Glasner. That Lisa Denoto Glasner. <laughs> so we have not had a chance to to, uh, to chat about Toy Story Four. Give me your give me your give us your thoughts. So, I I need to see it a second time because I feel like the most of 
like 95% of the first time I watched it. While I was enjoying it, I like resented the fact that I was enjoying it. Um, because I was so sort of against the fact that it had been made at all. And like you said, like every single time I saw a trailer, I was like, I didn't think I could be less interested, but yeah. you did it again. Um, like, I remember, like, I think one of the things, like when I wrote up a review of Aladdin or whatever it was, one of the things that I wrote was like, yeah, the, the Toy Story trailer sucked again. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, like, I, I don't know, like, what they necessarily should have done differently with the trailers, because obviously they couldn't have given away the end. Um, but, yeah, like, I think I watched the whole thing, and I sort of begrudgingly enjoyed the whole thing. But, like, in its final moments, again, of course, without giving anything away, I was like, oh, okay, it's okay to like it, because it needed to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> Because the closure I thought I had after three, I didn't realize until that moment that I had been wrong about. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I wrote about it, you know, on, on my own site. Um, and again, like, I'm not going to give anything away here, but like, I, I, like every time Toy Story 4 came up, I was like, well, you know, they don't make bad movies. They make great movies. These are great characters. Like, I'm sure I'm going to see it in the theater. I'm sure I'm going to you know, enjoy it, but like it didn't need to happen. And why aren't they, you know, sort of, why aren't they, you know, letting this sleep or letting this sit and moving on and creating something new. And it just, it felt like a money grab, you know, like I hate to use that phrase, but it just felt like, you know, instead of being creative and coming up with a new set of characters and a new, a new franchise that they were just sort of, you know, milking this one a little bit more. And until the the fear, I think that's what the fear was, right? Like, yeah, of course. We all felt like we don't need another Toy Story film. Like, it's a trilogy. It's done. We thought that three was the appropriate time and place and had literally turned the page until we saw this. I'm like, oh, like, I get it. It's like, oh, like, I don't want to say too much, right? but like, oh, like. This this is the movie. I had the closure about turned. the wrong thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I felt, um, I felt complete. Yeah. Like I felt good with this. And it's, Jeremy Goff is like, I'm looking forward to the fifth, for the fifth movie in the trilogy. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like you know, I mean, I, um, you know, if you look at kind of when each of the movies came out, like so many of us, it sort of trajected our entire life. You know, I mean, I think I was like 19 or something when the first one came out, and you know, now I'm you know, an undisclosed age that's much older than that. And, um, you know, it's, I think, again, like, without saying too much, like, while the movies, I think, kind of stands on its own as something that anyone of any age could enjoy, sort of like, you know, I mean, I guess you could walk into it blind from the other three and just enjoy it on its own terms. But, like, I think it was such a just nod to the point in life that so many of us are in who have been through all of these movies from you know the first one to now like the permissions that it gives you um in your own life or wherever you are in your own life with the ending um i think speaks volumes about how well pixar knows its audience well and i think that's the, that's what pixar does and disney does so well in their movies is that you see them at a certain age or a certain time of your life and you you have certain what you think are supposed to be the takeaways and then you watch it again and you feel completely different. If I watched this movie as a 25 year old that have no didn't have kids, I would think and feel differently and, and my takeaway lessons, which I obviously can't share, would be very, very different. But as a parent and as a friend and as a an adult in age only like i felt mm -hmm. certain different things and i think again the 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 movie can be visually stunning the music could be wonderful the voice acting can be phenomenal but if it's not grounded in an amazing story and now i get it i said at the when they first announced this, i said disney must feel like they have an incredible story to tell, and I think that they mm -hmm. did, and and I felt, um, I felt very very differently when I walked out 
than I did before I walked in. Yeah, and I just like and sort of going to what I was saying, you know, before. I mean, they all work on different levels, and they all sort of you know speak to us on different levels. But I think this one was able to make so much more use of that because so many of us had, you know, held on to these movies and grown up with these movies. And sort of when I watched Toy Story one as a you know nineteen year old or whatever, you know, versus watching Toy Story four, you know, in my early forties, it's. It, <laughs> The, the lessons and the takeaways that I took from Toy Story more were so much more powerful because I had grown up with yeah. this franchise. So Adrian Stetsoni so. says, uh, I was five when the first one came out. I grew up with these characters, and I think it's this, and I think this ending was the ending I never knew that I wanted, and I agree. I think Toy Story 4 was the movie that we did not know that we meet, that we needed. So um, thank you yep. for calling in and sharing. And yes, you need to go see it again and just don't even watch the foreground. Just go watch the background. And I know I was like covertly taking notes <laughs> even the first time. <laughs> right. um, <laughs> all right. Take all care. Right. Thanks so much. Later. Bye. bye. Um. How about a how about a movie about sushi that comes to life? Soy story. Oh my God, Jeremy Goff, you are on a uh, you're on a roll tonight. Hey, it's Lou. You're on the air. Hello, Lou. Yes. Hey, Joe Vigliotti from Point Pleasant. Hey, Joe Vigliotti from Point Pleasant, New Jersey, home of some of the best sausage and peppers and salt and vinegar French fries on the boardwalk. Exactly, and also Seaside. We were there yesterday at Breakwater Beach. Nice, man. How you doing? So, I'm doing well, thanks. Um, just a quick question. Do you think there will be a number five as an offshoot of number four? So, with neither of us giving anything away, it's interesting because I think the way the film ended, it does turn a page, right? So, it, it completes a, a chapter or chapters of... A Toy Story. If that next page is the end of the book, it makes sense. If that next page is the next part of the story, it makes sense. Look, the same way that Avengers, well, technically Spider-Man Far From Home, is going to end the Infinity War saga of Marvel, right, in this Marvel Cinematic Universe... It completes that story, but when that page is turned, it could end at the end of that movie, but it also is going to be a bridge to new stories that are going to be told later. They certainly can do it this time. Uh, They can certainly do that with Toy Story, and maybe that's the door or the window or whatever um, that they want to leave open. So if people feel as though, or there's not, and I think it's going to come down to this, man. I think it's going to be, is there another compelling enough story that has to be told? Is there a new character? Is there a new message? Is there a new adventure that has to be gone on to warrant it being a Toy Story 5? And if not, I'm really okay with this being the ending of the Toy Story films. Okay, we're we're looking forward to seeing it. All right, brother. Thanks so much. Thanks for taking the call. You got Take it. Take care, Lou. Bye-bye. And it's I'm being very, very careful not to um, not to say anything that would give it away. Jeremy Goff wants Kingdom Keepers movies. So does Ridley Pearson. Um, so does uh, Ridley Pearson. So Judy Bennett says, is there five of any movies? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, they're not all good, but there's a way more than that for Star Wars movies. Um, we're going to get a fifth Indiana Jones movie. Not that I count Kingdom of the Crystal Skull as part of that oh series goodness. either. But uh, hey, it's Lou. You're on the air. Hi. Hey, howdy. Hey, Lou. Hey, how you doing? It's Caleb Hill. Caleb Hill from Swanksville, Pennsylvania. How you doing, Caleb? All right. Give me give me your your brief, you know, your thought, your one sentence thought and review of Toy Story 4. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's what, yeah, um, oh my gosh. I mean, I saw it yesterday, so it was, oh, wow. Um, uh, on a scale of one to 10? I give it a 12. Wow. <laughs> so what 12, is it? What, yeah. what is it about this film 
that made it so good? No spoilers, but what was it that made no, it no. so good? Yeah. Um, I mean, first off, I mean, I grew up with these, like, the rest of the people that you were talking to. Um, and I, I watched it on VHS, like, a bunch <laughs> of times. Um, but this film, it, it, it just did, it, it was worth seeing and, um, what can I say that I won't spoil it because <laughs> right. man, it's, yeah, the, the animation, like you said, is amazing. I mean, I grew up, you know, learning from all the animators. I mean, I'm not an animator myself, but I, I, uh, learn from them by, you know, watching bonus features and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, just knowing that, you know, the, the animation is, is amazing. Like you said, with the leaves and the water, and I don't know if this is a spoiler, but RC, I guess. Yeah, right. Uh, so the scene early on, yeah. yeah, without. But, and I think you yeah. could almost. You can watch this movie in. with a number of different mindsets and a, and a number of different eyes. And what I mean by that is, yeah. I watched it the first time, like, I, I, I literally watched it the first time saying. And I sat back going, okay, show me. Like, show me why I should be here. I, I Yes. F- and for those people who convinced me of being a Disney homer and Lou loves everything, I, st- exactly. I, w- I sat in the theater with my arms crossed. Like, okay, let me see why you need to... You know, I was ready to... I, I, I expected myself not to like it. And then I went back and I was like, wow. I really love this movie, but I also noticed out of the the periphery of my eye and ears that there were, uh, I'm a sucker for the details and the Easter eggs. I wanted to go back and watch it for that. I wanted to go back and pick up some of the nuances. And then I was also watching it from a visual point of view. Like again, taking, I, I took time during my viewing to be hyper aware of what was happening in the background from a visual point of view as well as an auditory point of view. I was trying to look mm-hmm. around and gauge the reaction and the responses of other people in the audience from my family and my kids to the people who were in the row behind me. Were they laughing? Were they smiling? Why were they getting up to leave before the very end of the movie? But, And I think that's how this film should... Um, I think that's how the film should absolutely be seen. So uh, I appreciate you calling in, man, and, um, yeah. and definitely go see it again. Oh, yeah, I will see it during, like, 4th July and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see it again. Sounds Thank good, you. brother. Thank <laughs> you, man. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. So, yeah, Mike Sizemore, it was good to see you, by the way, last week. Um, it is It is absolutely um, visually stunning. Like, I almost want to go back um and watch toy story one or even toy story three to see the the exponential leap forward in there were even some scenes where you get close up on some of the character you get a close up like on, on woody's face and you you can see almost like microscopic that that the skin is not perfect it's not flawless like toy story one it's flat there is depth to it there's there's grit to it this toy has been been played with for decades you can see that wear in woody less so much so in buzz you can watch how the fur moves on the fur character and bo peeps it's not even just they're like pantaloons like move in the wind and how the wind affects every it's just it, it is just a gorgeous gorgeous movie to watch um and, and i would have no problem going to see it uh, for a third time in the theater which i do not do a lot other than spider-man far from home and avengers endgame go see it again this weekend take down avatar there's three well there's more than three three that you're supposed to know of additional scenes and i am telling you you are going to and i haven't seen it yet but i know what's there you're going to want to go see avengers endgame this weekend 
simply for the post credits. There's 10 minutes that I would bet dollars to donuts may be some of the funniest 10 minutes you'll see in Marvel Cinematic Universe history. That's me. I'm rolling the dice, baby, and taking a chance because that's, again, what they have earned. Uh, Becky Mankin says, Monsters, Inc. was the first movie where I really spilled my drink and was blown away by the animation. Well, and Monsters, Inc. was a technological leap forward. It's really where they began to master the art of the fluidity of hair. And the, the they basically, you know, hand drew almost every single piece of fur on Sully. And it reflected that. And then look at the films that were to follow. Look at Merida's hair in Brave. Again, you need to sometimes watch the films not with, you know, binoculars, but you need to watch it with a microscope and drill down and see just how it, it has advanced. And there are moments in Toy Story 4 from the opening scene to some of... Um, when I say slower moving, I mean just in terms of motion on screen, you really get a sense whether it's a blade of grass, whether it is... Notice the difference of the the, the the textural differences between Buzz and Woody and Gabby Gabby and the ventriloquist dummies and, you know, Bunny and Ducky. And it's remarkable. And then go watch back and watch Toy Story 1. It It's night and day difference. And again, you sometimes forget that people drew this like it's man-made and they made every single leaf, every rain droplet, every ripple in the water, every piece of dirt on the side of the RV. It's the, the sunsets and the backgrounds are just stupid gorgeous. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I did not expect this is the movie that I did not expect to fall in love with, and I did, and I don't know why. Maybe because I'm going through menopause and I'm ridiculously emotional as of late. But it it did. It hit me in um, it hit me in a lot of um, different ways, and much like the the Pixar films that I think are their best, uh, it was a wonderful in a fulfilling way it was a wonderful fulfilling emotional roller coaster of nostalgia and whimsy and you know a little bit of of i don't want to say terror or fear like it's not a scary movie but there's moments that are like wow this this is it's it's a for lack of a better word dark thing that's happening here and again, there's a wonderful reference to The Shining that's just, it's phenomenal and I loved it and I wanted to sort of get up and applaud it because it was just so appropriate. But watch, this is so stupid. There's a scene in the shop where they sort of get in between um, uh, an area that hasn't been dusted. Look at the dust bunnies. Look at the color of the gray and the brown dust as you can almost smell it. Like my parents used to own an antique store. I used to go antiquing a lot. So maybe this is why the antique store really impacts me so much because I've been in that store. I know what it smells like. I know that things haven't been dusted in decades and there's literally lifetimes of dust sort of blowing around and you see it on the lamps and you see it on the fans and you see it on tops of the board games and you see it in the glass like you see the reflections and the those minute scratches in the glass which just you know and we're not even talking about the story like i'm just talking about the visuals so um karen spivey you absolutely need to see this in the theater this movie is one that is absolutely meant 
to be seen on the big screen. And I, I'm not kidding. I might go back to see it in 3D, which I have never, ever, ever done before. Hey, it's Lou. You're on the air. Hi, Lou. Yes. Hello? Yeah. Hi, Lou. Hello. Who's this? This is Linda Lammers calling from Alberta, Canada. I thought it was Linda Lammers. Your voice sounded very familiar, young lady. How are you? I Well, I'm tired. You know, I'm chasing a 20-month-old around. So. <laughs> That's going to keep <laughs> you just, young. It's going to keep you young yes, and beautiful. Yes, well, well, right. I didn't think I'd have a chance to check in, but just finished cleaning stuff up from dinner, and I thought I would just... I'm not going to join about the Toy Story because I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to see it with Andrea sometime next week. Nice. But I would just wanted to say hello to everybody, and um, I will probably I will try to watch the show tomorrow. Good. Well, let, after you watch Toy Story, come into the Box People group and let us know what you think. I'll be curious to okay. hear your thoughts. Okay. I'm. 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 I'm I, I had to rewatch Toy Story three a couple weeks ago <laughs> because I really didn't remember a lot of, about it. Right. And. And I, and I cried at the end of that, so I can't imagine what's going to happen in four. So You're going to be fine. Don't worry. I promise. Y- yes, yes, yes. So anyway, you, well, you have Toy a- Story 4, I promise it's going to be okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. And I wait. I wait. Yeah. Well, I actually, I was on the Amtrak when it came out, so I couldn't see it. But eh, no, but like I said, Andrea and I are going to go see it sometime next week. So nice. and I will, and I will comment on it. Excellent. Please do. All righty. Well, so good take, to hear oh, from you. I see Becky saying, yeah, Becky. Hi, Becky. She's saying hi. And Paul, <laughs> uh, people are saying hi here on, as it's scrolling through there. So hi, everybody that's saying hi to me. And I'll let you take some more calls or finish your whatever you're doing. And uh, looking forward to the New Orleans. I info am as well. Soon. Look forward yes, to seeing you yes. then. Thanks so much, Linda. Okay. Bye-bye. 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 So I see a 407 number continuing to call and try again. I'm sorry, I just keep missing you. There you are. Hey, it's Lou. You're on the air. Well, hello there, Lou. Hi, everybody. It's Beatrice Dennis. How are you tonight? <laughs> How are you, Beatrice Dennis? I am fantastic. I just had to do my little time in because I adored Toy Story 4. And I didn't think that I would feel as much love for it as I did. But... um my favorite new character was Gabby Gabby. So why? So what is it about Gabby Gabby other than the fact that it's Christina Hendricks from Firefly and <laughs> she makes my heart all a flutter? Okay, so I wasn't all about her because of that. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, first of all, I loved the original Gabby Gabby, so I'm not going to tell you my age. But <laughs> I will tell you that, you know, some of the characters in the antique shop are a little scary to me, but she was just such a sweetheart. And I love how, even though you're a little bit scared of some things, you keep your mind open and you just really, you know, learn about people. I won't give anything away. I promise. (laughs) But you learn things about everybody's situation and you just take that into life. You know, whatever it is, you, you take that person for what they are. You listen to who they are and you try to understand things from their perspective. And, and that's what I did with her as a character. So she was my favorite newbie. But I was crying before the beginning credit like <laughs> came on with Toy Story 4. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I was already, like, you know, had my tissues out before Toy Story 4 came up on the screen. Beatrice I'm like, oh, crying. my God. Beatrice is crying <laughs> at the part where they tell you to silence your phone. Beatrice is hysterical. <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to handle this movie. <laughs> But it was wonderful. It was really, really wonderful. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think, so. you know, and whether it's Gabby Gabby or when you're first introduced to Buzz Lightyear or he first, you're right. Everybody is on a, and this is what I mean. This is the lesson that we as adults take away that everybody is on a journey that sometimes we don't understand or we don't know what the motivations are behind why they do what they do, right? And, and, um, how friendships are made and the importance of friendships and self-sacrifice and sacrificing for others. And there's, there's, I, I'm, I'm shocked at how much I felt like I took away from this film um, about 
relationships and friendships, which actually, by the way, so wait, hold on for a second, because I'm going to quickly go off topic and then I'm going to come back to the topic. So stay okay. with me, because this is actually talking <laughs> okay. about um, um, this kind of stuff and friendships and, and whatnot. I think this is actually a good segue to talk about what I asked you guys to do a couple of weeks ago, back on June 12th, I asked you as my friends to spread the word about the show or that week's episode or the live show and that whoever, and I didn't even know how it was going to play out, but whoever sort of did it in the way that sort of impacted the most, whether it was getting the most people in or impacted me, um, would win this ginormous, wait a minute, this ginormous Toy Story 4 prize package. There's all kinds of good stuff, including some stuff you can't even buy there. And first of all, thanks to everybody who participated, who helped spread the word. Um, forgive me if I didn't see or comment on something. If you didn't tag me, I tried to search for either my name or WW Radio, but I am grateful for all of the shares and the support. But I really found one that... I think captured the essence of the intent and the community and about organically and authentically sharing our collective love of Disney and our community that you guys have built and wanting to introduce it to new friends the right way for the right reason and the importance of family, right? We, we heard about that at the beginning when we were talking about John Jones by sharing photos or our mutual love of both ha Boathouse during good times and in the bad times. And the person that I felt captured the essence of what I was trying to do with the spread the word contest, as I just decided to call it, as it came to mind a couple of weeks ago, is somebody who has such genuine enthusiasm which is infectious in a way that i have rarely seen it's somebody who spreads joy like whenever or wherever they enter a room whether it's a virtual room online or a room at a meet of the month or elsewhere and um, this person has just coincidentally been a longtime friend and has taught me a lot about friendship and did a wonderful job and, and in the post about sharing and wanting to invite people into this clubhouse really captured exactly what it was that I was trying to do. And coincidentally, I'm going to cry again. It's Beatrice Dennis. So Beatrice Dennis, I kept you on the phone this long because I loved your post and your share and all the things that you say and do, not just last week, but all the time to invite your friends to be part of our collective friendship and family. So this entire Toy Story package and all the stuff that's in it, including all the stuff that's in this backpack that you can't get anywhere else, is yours and I thank you and I appreciate you and your love and the support and your friendship more than you know. I appreciate you too. You got me crying too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not okay. <laughs> you gotta warn me. If you've if you've never watched oh the show God. before, I promise there's usually not this much crying that goes on. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that I just did that for fun because I just love sharing our community and I've got to tell you some stuff that I that you don't even know but some of my like high school friends and people who've never ever in their life been to Disney who live in the you know farmlands of North Carolina actually said that they listened to your podcast for the first time because I asked them to and I actually went on the little tear and went through like a lot of people that I knew were not Disney people in my list of friends just to get them to listen to it. And I love the feedback that they gave me because our community is just so special and it's not just our community, but it's just like everything about Disney, everything we share, everything we do, this movie. I mean, no matter where you live in the world, you can watch it, you can like it. And we have something in common and every single person I've met is special. 
I, I got to say while I'm here, John C. Jones, to his mom and dad and his family, we love you. We, we're all there for each other. And <clears throat> Lou, thank you. Because <laughs> without this clubhouse, we wouldn't have a place to meet each other. And you give us a place that that no matter where in the world I go, I feel like I have friends. And I don't know how that works out, but I've always been safe <laughs> <laughs> and they've always been good people. Somehow our group really, really does find the good people in, in everybody. And, and I've just, I've had an amazing amount of good times and good friends that I can't imagine my life without right now. So, so thank you. Thank you for for doing that. <laughs> well, but look, I, I say this all the time. For- it's, it's, I, I may have built the clubhouse, but you guys are the ones who populate it, and you mm-hmm. truly are magnets for the type of people that you want to attract. And I think good people attract good people. And that's why there's such a, a wonderful, positive, welcoming vibe and energy. And I hear all the time from people that it's a place that they feel not just safe, but they feel welcome and they feel important and they feel special and they feel heard because people just want to belong and it's important to belong to the right group of the right people and that's on you guys you know you guys have done that I've, I've say this all the time I've never placed an ad I've never spent money trying to advertise or trick people to join the group it has grown the way it has grown because of you and everybody else that that's like you who is in it so um, that is a, it's very much a testament to you guys. Well, thanks for being there. Thanks for <laughs> including us, and, and thanks for giving us a, a place to hang. And, and when everyone watches, as we get back to Toy Story 4, Gabby, Gabby, <laughs> watch her story. Seriously, just watch her story and understand life from her perspective. It's beautiful. And it's, it's kind of like all of us. You, Sometimes if you really try for something, you just might get your dream come true. Well said. Well said. And uh, <laughs> I, will, I will get your, um, I'll get your prize package out to you right away. <laughs> and, and thank you. And thank you for all that you do uh-huh. for, we've known each other a long time and, uh, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. I'll get you to other callers, but thanks for being there. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Chef Bob is here spending, telling me how much I've spent at the boathouse uh, time and otherwise. Hey, it's Lou. You're on the air. Hey, Lou Bongello. It's Darlene Nagy from West Seneca, New York. No, you're not from where I am not going to let you get away with that. <laughs> I mean, I guess well, technically actually, for the time being, you're still from West Seneca, New York. but Well, actually, I'm in Binghamton, New York right now on a business trip. So, <laughs> Well, it doesn't flow quite as well, but... No, Binghamton does it. But yes, as I haven't put it out there, but I'm going to let my Vox family know that we will be moving to the mouse world very soon in the near future. So now you guys all know. So please still try to keep it as a surprise because Keith wants to post the house pictures with me. <laughs> and thank you so much for giving us the courage, Lou, to do this and bringing, like Beatrice said, bringing our family together and giving us this wonderful family that we have because I just feel so right now I'm overwhelmed Um, because this has been such an exciting adventure for Keith and I to be doing and to have you guys um, supporting us and stuff. Um, It really means the world to me and Beatrice and Brian have been great hosts to us and just having everybody supporting us and not even knowing that they've been supporting us, but it really did help in this like this journey that we're on so well good don't and... cry <laughs> <laughs> you'll always be from west Sen- you're always going to be from west Seneca, new york no matter where you are <laughs> and i went to see toy story for yesterday and i still needed my box of tissues <laughs> <laughs> And I have to say, the writing for the fourth was just as good as the writing for the first. Maybe even better. I, maybe, and mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I this, 
I have to watch Toy. You know, this, I, there's still something about an origin story that I love uh, with Toy Story One. But if it's not first in the Toy Story quadrilogy for me, it's it's a very close second. Mm-hmm. I would maybe put yeah. one, yeah. four, two, three in terms of my order. Yeah. We were talking So yeah, no, it is. It's absolutely. Um, it was so good. I love the way they wrote everything, and they they had it done. And I. <laughs> My girlfriend and I, well, you know Karen. So mm-hmm. our new thing was at work today. Hello, trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people don't look at so. people don't look at things differently after uh, after they see Toy Story Four. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. So, but I don't want to keep you. I know you probably got another call on hold. So, thank you again for everything. Love you, brother, and I will see you real soon. You got to talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. So there you go. So uh, the um, and if you didn't like Toy Story four, you obviously are more than welcome to to call in and and share that um, as well. But um, it, it seems like the uh, yes, I just made up the word quadrilogy. Um, the uh, it seems like the overwhelming response has been one of um, delight and surprise. Um, when it comes to Toy Story 4. So if you have not seen it yet, I would love to know your feedback uh, if and when that you do. Go into the Box People group and we will be um, talking more. A quintilogy? I'm really not sure what uh, what exactly it's, um, what exactly it is called. But uh, I want to thank you guys again for tuning in this and every week. Don't forget to tune in to this week's show, Overlooked Experiences for Adults in Walt Disney World, where it doesn't matter if you cry or not. It's, you can still be a kid again. Um, and uh, I, Chef Bob, the boathouse may or may not have, in a certain way, may or may not have made my list of overlooked experiences. Ah, who cares? I'll give it away. The Venezia made it to my list of overlooked experiences in Walt Disney World. And we're going to, I think I even said it on the show this week, we're going to do something one night where maybe we'll we'll get the Venezia one night and um, uh, we'll, we'll give away a couple of seats on the Venezia and we'll all go out for a little... Um, a little seafood tower or some champagne or something like that. Uh, Also, I think I mentioned on this week's show, and I decided because it's the end of the month and it's just been a crazy couple of weeks, that uh, tickets for my Momentum Weekend Workshop in Walt Disney World are on sale, and I'm going to extend, I have extended the early bird sale. It was supposed to end on Monday. I extended it to this coming Sunday night. So if you are interested in coming, you can learn more at lumangelo.com slash momentum, but you can still take advantage of the early bird pricing uh, up until then. And then it goes up. Remember, it's limited to just 50 people. We're a little bit more than 50% sold out now, I think. So get your ticket before they go up. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me and let me know uh, what else am I forgetting don't forget when you're coming to Walt Disney World and you want to have a place to stay before you go eat at the boathouse, you can go and visit MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. And what else? What else we got coming up? Oh, don't forget New Orleans is coming up still. I Speaking of great food and great cruises and the enhancements to the Disney Wonder, we still have, if you reach out to Becky and her team, they can give you a free no obligation quote for our cruise to New Orleans in February. Thanks to all of you who uh, call in, wait in about Toy Story 4 tonight. I sincerely appreciate it. I appreciate you also helping to spread the word about the show, about this community, about this incredible family that you have created um, through the good times and the hard times and the loss of people like John and others. Um, I am amazed at and impressed at just how um, incredible you are individually and collectively. It's why I love you. It's why I appreciate you. And I, I will keep on doing this with you and for you as long as you will let me. So again, 
I hope that this is your best week ever. Don't forget to invite your friends to join our friends here in the Box People group and be part of the WW Radio Nation family. So until next time, I hope that this is your best week ever. Thanks again. Love you. Bye.